How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking all about modern product rendering that goes from lighting to animation and a lot more. Today's video is also brought to you by Acer's Concept D. More on that later in the video. Let's get straight into the video. All right, we are here in the Blender interface. Today, I'm going to be using Blender 3.0 Alpha. Now you can use whatever of the whatever the most stable up to date version of Blender is. Everything we're doing here works in the official releases here. I really just wanted to use the um Cycles X. So if you want to get Blender 3.0, it is a link in the description. You can download that and use it. Um, speaking of Cycles X, it does speed up your renders. Speaking of rendering, this computer has tons of power on it. First of all, it has the latest gen Intel Core i7 CPU and the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000. So for a laptop that's very mobile, it has a lot of power to it. So you're going to get a lot of power with this uh, laptop. So that being said, let's get into product rendering, product style. So the first thing I want to demonstrate to you is a little bit of a scene setup and talk about lighting. The model I'm using is this motorcycle helmet. It's just a stand-in model. I'll leave it in the description if you want to use it. Um, but you can use as simple as the Suzanne head or a sphere, anything like that. I would use probably right here the uh, Suzanne monkey if you don't want to use that helmet. You could use, use this because it still kind of has a face to it and you can rotate it around if you want to follow along. So first off, let's go ahead and set up our base. So it's going to be a plane. I'm going to hit S9 to scale that to the scale of 9. Control A, apply that scale. Next thing I'm going to do here is get in a mesh cylinder and I'm going to give, well, let's, get, so let's see, uh, we're going to go here. I'm going to hit tab and we're just going to bring it up to right here and then i'm going to go ahead and delete these two faces now you'll either need to slow down the computer you'll need to either slow down the footage or just kind of watch along but here it, it's less of a follow along do exactly what i'm doing and really just kind of watch and understand the concepts and try to see if you can make something similar to or exact to it um, but i'm talking more about principles of lighting uh, talking about how models interact with lighting movement and how it all kind of correlates with modern product rendering. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some loop cuts to this guy, because we are going to be displacing it later, and it needs to have some nice topology to actually displace. So I'm just gonna subdivide it once. Now we have a nice amount of topology to actually work with. I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and uh, scale it out. So I'm gonna use the scale tool here. Here, the actual exact shape doesn't matter, because we're gonna be decimating this so we can just kind of have some fun with it and then bring it up a little bit. Now I mentioned displacement. I'm going to go ahead and displace this guy. We do need to apply that scale. And then I'm going to go ahead and displace. I'm going to use my favorite here, which is clouds. Kind of weird displacement, but that's all right. Something like this. Now let's go ahead and decimate so we can get this nice look here. Now this is going to be the background of our animation. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. Not only does this low poly background look really nice, but it also gives something that our lighting can interact with because the lighting is gonna be coming downward. So these kind of extruded out pieces, in and out pieces are really gonna have some fun with the lighting and create some really nice contrast and depth. So let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit. Now we have that. Let's go ahead and make our platform that our helmet model is going to be on. So right now what I'm doing is I'm setting up something very simple so that we can put our product in the middle. That's kind of the idea when creating scenes. Make them very simple because your product is the focal point. Make a fairly interesting background, floor, ceiling, whatever, wall, and then make sure that your product is the standout thing. So that's kind of why I'm not going crazy with my modeling because I want it to be very simple. So I'm going to do another cylinder. I'm going to give myself 85 vertices here. I'm going to hit tab so we can hit control. So my anchor points here on the bottom. So I'm going to scale this down here. Do something like this. This is going to be the big plate. And then just like that, I'm going to go ahead and apply my scale, add a bevel. Beveling is very important, makes things look really nice, very soft. I'm going to shift D to duplicate it. Scale it down, something like this. Cool, now we have kind of a platform. Maybe this guy can be a little bit taller. 
something like that. Now for my helmet, I'm just going to go ahead and append the uh, collection that that helmet is a part of. So we're going to go here to the collection. There it is. We have our collection. I'm going to delete this. So here it is. Now this collection, I mean this helmet here, is all these pieces are controlled by this one empty. So imagine this as just one piece. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up to be an appropriate size for our platform. And there we go. Our helmet is sitting here on our platform just the way we want. Now I'm going to set up the camera rig that's going to go with this piece. So we do have this empty right here. So that came with my collection. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete it to demonstrate you what that does. Let's go ahead and get a camera for our rig. And we're going to get a curve that our camera is going to attach to. I do want to go ahead and bring up the resolution of that curve. Let me click on the camera here. We're going to go down here to constraints, add constraint, follow path, and select that Bezier circle. So now we can scale up that circle like this, and we have our camera attached to it, which is really nice. So camera attached, we can do that. We want our camera to point at this helmet. So to make that easy and control, we'll hit Shift A, empty plane axis, and then I'm going to bring it up and scale it up just so we can kind of see it. And then click back on the camera, back to the constraints, and we're going to use the track to target, which I'm just going to call this a name so I can actually find it. I'm going to call it track. And then we're going to click back on the camera here. Target, track. Now the camera, if I hit zero here, is tracking to that. So then I can just kind of use this Bezier circle. And then the camera, let's see how far back I can get this circle to be. Right about there. And then the rest of the zooming can happen in our focal length. We're at a 50 millimeter focal length. I'd say right about there is really nice. And then this background needs to be a good amount taller to fill in our scene. Control A, apply that scale, and then bring down some of that decimation to make it a lot more simple. Okay, so now we can go straight into rendering. I'm going to make sure I'm in cycles here, GPU, and then make sure in my preferences we are getting that Quadro and Intel Core CPU. And I'm going to hit render. So for lighting, very simple. We want a really soft, very big light right above. And that's very common. You see that in product um, design, especially in these types of environments and scenarios. Very big, soft light. It really does the job and really easily. This isn't the only light we're going to be doing here. We're actually going to be doing some mesh lights to add some more kind of pizzazz to this design. Um, but this is the first step when it comes to lighting. So we're going to get that there. I do want to make this a uh, ellipse. And then we're going to go way up here, scale it up. Like I said, it's got to be a big light, so we're going to make a really big light. And then we're going to make our power at like a 1,000. So now we've created very soft lighting. Let's go ahead and start shading just a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and in the principled, make it black. And then let's go ahead and bring that roughness down, something like this. And I'm going to click these, control L link those materials. And in this case, now what we're going to do is just go ahead and make that light a lot brighter, maybe 3,000, something like that. So now we have something really, really cool. And I'm going to click on this empty in the middle so that we can actually control our um, helmet. And now we're going to get into actually working on the animation for this. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. So let's go ahead and get our scene going. One really cool thing I like to do just for aesthetics is I like to turn on cavity and shadow here for my scenes because I think it's really fun and it makes these scenes look really just interesting while we're looking at this flat shading. So I'm going to call this, call this empty control just so I can see it better. This is going to be the control object which controls everything here. If you're just using a single object, That'll be your single object. Again, if you don't want to use this helmet or it's just annoying to import models and stuff, I would recommend using the Suzanne because we're going to get the same thing. We are dealing with kind of an object with a face, and that's kind of the idea for this product. So let's get into actually animating things with product styles. So in your preferences here, go to animation. Make sure your default interpolation is set to Bezier because we're going to manipulate 
that curve you see, and I'll explain that later. So let's go ahead and start animating. So we have our timeline here. For the first bit of motion, I want the, the helmet to go up, kind of hover up, because that's very interesting and exciting. So kind of about 14 frames, something like that. So it's going to go up just enough so that this helmet can move around and have a comfortable amount of space to move. And I'm going to click that. So now we have that. I do think that's too little amount of time, so we're going to do up. That looks really good. Now let's talk about editing your keyframes and getting that really cool product style that you see everywhere in modern product tutorials and not modern product tutorials, modern product animations. So if we click on animation here, I'm going to click zero here so we can see our camera. I'm going to move this over because all we need to do is see this. I'm going to click this drop down. We're going to go to the graph editor. The graph editor is how we manipulate the speed of our animations. So if we click on this right here, we have this. So if we press play, you can see this curve. That is the speed. So you'll notice the animation. It starts slow and then ends slow. That has a smooth beginning to end. It's not just starts and stops. So if you'll notice stop, slow down. You can see how it slows down at the end. It also is slow when it starts like that. What we want to do is have it really quickly animate in and then slow down at the end. And the way we do that is by pulling this right over here. So we're actually visually editing the way it animates. So if we look, look how cool that is. If we go back to the way it was, how it animates, smooth like that. Take this lever right here, which you can see right here, the Z location. You can see all that control right here and select specifically what animation you're playing with. Select this and make that curve much more dramatic so that it actually speeds up quicker. You can see that visually shown, visually shown right there. Press play, just like that. That is exactly what we want. Really quick to the beginning, very slow to the end. Really cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and animate the rotation of the helmet turning. So we kind of want it to, where do we want to kind of, everything needs to be boom, boom, boom. And when I mean that, it's like every bump is a different movement. So boom, right here. And then we want the helmet to actually turn to kind of look at us. And I'd say right here in the middle, we'll be able to tweak that later. So I'm going to click, I believe it's the Z. Okay, so we'll click Z. And we'll go to like right here to have it look more toward us so we can really see this product really want to see the angles and the how this whole thing looks okay so that looks terrible but that's okay we're going to go ahead and animate that speed so you'll see z euler rotation that's what we want to play with now so if i kind of bring this out and actually find where that is right here so you're going to see this we're going to do the same thing so edit that to look the way we want so way too quick. So we can bring this one a little bit farther, try to play with that timing. So probably right when the other one moves. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So that is kind of the idea we're trying to go with. And then the last thing we want to do is to make it kind of look down like that. And that's going to be like the ultimate product, really cool shot that we want to pause on. It really demonstrates this really nice curve. So we're going to go ahead and zero that out again. Okay. So everything happening at once. Let's see if we can actually bring this closer. Maybe like that. Cool, that's what we were right there. Boom. Really cool. So again, we want to play with this X rotation. So click the keyframe for the X. Go to like right there. And then make it look down and just almost touch the bottom. Just like that. And then we're seeing that X Euler rotation. So now we can start looking for where that is. Looks like it's right there. Again, pulling that cord so we can stretch it out. Look at that. Very dramatic, very aggressive, which is kind of the the way product um, animations go. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more time. 
There we go. So notice how we add a little bit more time. It looks much more beautiful, much more elegant, but still a little aggressive. Okay, so now that we have the whole animation for the helmet's movement, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna go back to the layout, because what I'm gonna do now is actually animate the camera movement. And then we're gonna make the camera go in a 360, which the reason why, one of the reasons why I used this um, circle here is because we can actually animate the camera. So one thing we're gonna have some problems with is with that touching, so we don't want it to touch. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead to my camera settings, and then I'm gonna make my camera a little bit more wide angle. And so where do I want my camera to start? Right about here. We want everything to be very snappy, everything to be very quick together. One movement directly after another or all at the same time, but we want things to communicate speed because it's a very modern looking product and this very modern looking animation. So we want everything to work together and look nice. So now that we have this camera, we're gonna go ahead and click on the constraints. And what this offset is right here on the follow path, we can animate that in a circle, which is what we're gonna do. So click your keyframe, and we're just gonna pick a couple frames here because we'll be, we're gonna edit that further. And we're gonna cl click one, zero, zero. That is gonna be a full rotation here. So we press play. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is give myself more time because that was really quick. Okay, now we're gonna go here to the um, animation and we're gonna do the same exact thing we just did. So we're gonna go ahead and speed that up. So pull that in Now let's see how that looks. And then one thing I wanna do is definitely give myself more time. But in this case, instead of just pulling this one in, I actually wanna pull this one in to get a much smoother start so what that's gonna do is give myself more, a, a more dramatic speed here in the middle. So that gives you a more elegant um, S-curve. And look at that. So see how that's more dramatic here in the middle. And in fact, I can give myself a little bit less time just like that. And this is really cool. So if we look at this animation in full, go up, look around, animate that just like that. Now we can use a little bit of polishing and then I'm gonna leave that specific part up to your taste. It's not completely perfect, but really nothing is. But now we have that. In fact, I'm gonna give myself some more time. Maybe a bit too much time. And now we have a beautiful animation. If we wanna check that out, here in cycles, what's really cool is this renders pretty quickly. We can go up, see how that looks. Really cool. I do wanna play with my color space a little bit here. So if we go here to the uh, camera icon, I'm gonna scroll down and here at my color management and then my look right here is gonna be high contrast. And one really cool thing about this specific monitor here on this computer is that it has 100% Adobe RGB color gamut. You're getting an incredible screen with this laptop. And for you graphic designers, if you're doing this as well, you are getting Pantone validated screens as well. So let's go ahead and click on that area light because what I'm gonna do now is bring my strength up to like, I don't know, 6,000. See if that's too much. All right, 6,000 looks great because that contrast kind of messed with me. And then I do want to bring up this color of this. Looks like everything looks nice. We can even go ahead back in our color space and go with a high contrast. And we're going to go back here and maybe get that color down a little bit. So there we go. We have a really, really nice scene. Now, last thing I want to do is really to kind of pizzazz up this scene because it looks really cool now, but it's very, still relatively basic. I want to add some neon lights going around here because two, for two specific reasons. Our camera goes pretty quickly in a circle, so I want to utilize some motion blur. And because this is very modern and this is kind of the dirt bike looking helmet, we want to kind of go after that whole vibe. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to set up some of these bars. So I'm going to go ahead and get in a cylinder. So get my cylinder here, I'm gonna hit tab, holding down control, I'm going up like this, so that it kind of sticks to the bottom. I'm gonna make it pretty thin, 
and then I'm gonna scale it up. And this design I'm gonna to do today, I'm actually gonna just make the, the bar go here to the top. In my original design, I'd actually made it kind of not go to the top, but I kinda of wanna do this now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit G and I'm just going to go ahead and place them in a circular pattern around my scene. So you can do that for yourself or you can do any kind of pattern you want, but I'm gonna kinda of pause the video here um, put them around my scene and we're gonna come back. So here we go, I have all my sticks and then I'm gonna go ahead and give them an emission material. Very quickly give it an emission, so give you that really cool extra element to your scene. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the rest. Control L, materials, so they're all gonna have the same material now. So if we look at the cycles view here, we're getting these really cool bars and I'm gonna go ahead and increase their emission strength. So now they look like this. And look how much better this scene looks with these neon bars. And then if we just go ahead and look at it now, it's gonna go around. Now, motion blur is not viewport, so I'm gonna go ahead and go right here with one of these bars, and I'm gonna render my image so you can see the actual motion blur. And if you don't know how to turn, use motion blur here in cycles, it's gonna be a button right there. Click on motion blur and we're gonna play with our shutter in just a second. So if you see, see this big white mess? That's the motion blur, but I don't actually like how far across it's stretching my screen. So what I'm gonna do is lower my shutter and that's basically going to make that stretching not quite so dramatic. So now if we look at it, less dramatic stretching, but still dramatic enough so it looks really cool in the render. And there you have it. We have created a really cool, easy animation. I'm gonna show you the final animation now. I really wanna thank Concept D for partnering with me here on this tutorial. If you wanna check out more about the Concept D7 Pro, check it out, linked in my description. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.